Do you think the Singapore property price will continue to go up in the next two to three years or will it go down or stay stagnant? I believe a lot of you have this question in mind, especially those who are looking around to enter now or in the near future. So today I'm going to use a very logical way based on economics, demand and supply to actually answer these questions in a very uh, factual way. Okay, But of course, this is based on my opinion. Uh, do do your own due diligence before you place your hard-earned money into property. Okay, So without further ado, I'm going to deep dive into this analysis. Okay, so as you can see, uh, I'm going to draw the demand and supply uh, based on what I understand about economics. Okay, so we all know that uh, this is the price, this is the quantity. Okay, this is economics 101. This is demand and this is supply. Okay, so as we all know that uh, demand side for property, I believe is quite uh, stable in Singapore and quite resilient and strong because we have very strong uh, this population growth. In fact, I think we are going towards the 6.5 to 6.9 6 million target in time to come. And also it's driven by another factor which is based on salary income. So as you all know, uh, salary income is also stable and going upwards. Okay, so I remember last time when I started work as an auditor, my starting pay was only 2000 So right now, I believe the starting pay is easily more than 3000 or even 4000 Okay, so salary definitely has gone up. So which is why we have more um, disposable income to purchase property. So as for the... Another thing about demand is, uh, in my opinion, property demand is very elastic. Okay, which means to say that if one day the government were to remove all the cooling measures, so imagine that for second property, you don't need to pay ABSD. What do you think will happen to the property? I think the show flat will be all crowded with buyers and overnight maybe a lot of the units will be taken. Okay, so this is how strong our property demand is in Singapore. Okay, of course, this is my own opinion, but I strongly believe in this. So there are still a lot of uh, buyers out there looking around just that they are waiting. Possibly maybe for the cooling measure to be removed or for the price to drop. So as for supply side, it's very inelastic. Okay, why I say that is because basically construction, it takes time to build a property. So you take basically take average about three to four years okay, or even five years to complete. So that's why it's very inelastic because today if you announce a GLS launch, okay, the government release more land for sale, but you can't possibly increase the supply overnight. Like next year is going to be completed. So definitely it will take time. So this is very inelastic. Okay, so basically what will happen when we reduce the supply for we reduce the supply for property? Okay, so using this chart we can see that okay, this is what I remember. Lah. So when supply drop, okay, prices will go up. Okay, so this is P1, okay, okay, maybe this is P0. Okay, so this is the original. And once the supply reduced, price will generally increase. But if the supply will increase, okay, in this case, P2, the price will drop, okay. So I'm also going to address all this uh, because this year we have record-breaking number of GLS launches. So will this actually increase the supply? I'm uh, also going to address these questions in the next uh, few slides. Okay, so I'm going to apply this concept into property. This is the supply pipeline for our private residential units and executive condos Okay, for the next three to four years and beyond. Okay. But before we deep dive into this, I'm going to show you the I'm going to show you the history. That means in the past, what was the supply chart? Okay, and then from there we can actually uh, analyze and predict probably what is going to happen in the future. Okay. 
So I actually draw this uh, supply pipeline chart uh, in 2015, okay, as of year 2015. And what was the future pipeline of supply in that period? Okay, so imagine right now we go back to year 2015, okay, and then you'll see that uh, basically is I want to divide this supply into two zones. Okay, the first zone is this zone, the 215 and 216 period. The second zone is the 217 and 18 period. Okay. Uh okay, we can also take in the 219. Okay, but I'm not going to go into after 2019 because after 2019, we all know what happened. COVID-19 kicked in. So during that period, uh, I call that the, the special year or extraordinary year in which uh, all property price actually went up significantly, mainly because of the this delay in construction. So property price actually shoot up. Okay, so I'm going to exclude that period. Otherwise, it will not be so uh, accurate in my analysis. Okay, so we all know that from this period to this period, right? Property supply for this period, the first zone was about 20,000 to 25,000 to be completed in that period. Whereas for 217 and 18 is about 15,000, okay? So I'm going to take in uh, EC and private, okay? To, together to analyze. So definitely we see a drop in the supply, but let's analyze what is the impact to the price. Okay, so we look at the price. So over here, you can see that 201, okay, this is 2015 to 2016. Okay, this is this zone. Okay, the first zone, I put it as one. So let's look at one. Okay, we notice that the property price still continue to increase, but at a very marginal rate, okay, 4%, about 4.6%, which is Barely covering inflation, okay, for two years, okay, mainly because of the supply is very high, twenty thousand to twenty five thousand. Let's look at the second zone, okay. This is the second zone, so second zone is referring to this part, okay, two o one, two o one seven, okay, to two o one eight, okay. I haven't included two o one nine yet, okay, but I just want to compare to be fair, two years and two years. So two one seven to two one eight. Let's see what is the increase. The price actually increased by 18 over percent. That's more than double. Okay. And let's look back at the supply chart. Okay, so we can see that obviously the supply has gone down. So it's very obvious when supply is low, definitely there'll be um less supply, right? So prices will definitely be higher, okay, unless the demand drop at the same time. So let's look at the current chart and what is going to be, happen in the next three to four years okay so we can see right now we are at 2013 okay but to take note that right now you can see here is we are only 3000 over uh, units but actually this is only for q4 okay so you must read carefully you must include okay this uh, footnote that there is another 15000 private and 1000 plus ec so if we add this number in, right? This is uh, 16, close to 17,000. The total here would be, okay, it will be 20,000. Okay, so right now we are already have 20,000 of supply in the market. Okay, and what is going to happen for the next few years? You can see the next few years, 12,000, 7,000, 7,000. Okay. And if you have been reading the news, right, the government has record numbers of GLS launch this year, which is why we see that after 2026, okay, this is a very high number, okay. But do take note that this is after 2026, it's not like for 2027 alone, okay. So this number can still be split into 2027, 2028, or even 2029. Uh, I will know the exact number, how many is going to complete in which year. But definitely it's not in one year we're going to have so much. Okay. But anyway, this will only happen after 2026. So right now we are more concerned about the next three years, right? Because right now, if you buy any property, you can't sell it within one year. You need to hold it for at least three years. So you know that the next three years, supply is low. 
okay, as compared to right now. Right now it's 20,000. Okay, so what do you think will be the price going forward? Okay, based on the supply right now. So one thing to think though is also that no matter how much the government increase the supply for this year, right? Okay, even if they continue to increase the GLS, it's not going to impact this three years. Okay, 2024 to 2026. Okay, so basically this is something that uh, I want to share with you that what, no matter what the government do right now, because the supply, as I mentioned, is going to take time to be constructed and complete. So most likely it will be after 2026, okay, unless suddenly there's a new invention on ways to in increase the production, productivity for construction that they can shorten from uh, three to four years to one to two years. Yeah, then probably we will see a change in this number. But for now, unlikely we will see any changes for the next two to three years. So what do you think based on the supply analysis, what do you think will happen in the next few years? Will the property price drop? Will the property price continue to increase? Or it will stay stagnant? Do leave me a comment and let me know what do you think. And help me to like and subscribe the video if you feel that you have gotten some value. So this will help me and encourage me to do more. And thank you for watching. Bye.